Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah wa ala ahlihi wa sobihi wa mawalah. Subhanaka la ilmalana ilama alam tana, inaka antal alimul hakim, wala fahmalana ilama faham tana, inaka antal jawadul karim. So this is a training video, advanced training for gin catching. That means that all the videos and documents that are published so far are the minimum to get started in gin catching. And now this video is to give the maximum. So it is for my students that already practice gin catching. So I want them to, uh, to perform better and to know much more about gin catching. It is also to pass the examinations to get the rocket diplomas that we issue in our group. So I'll not come back, I'll avoid coming back on what has already been said and taught in other uh, in other documents. So if you are preparing the examination, you still need to study the other documents. So the jinn catching is a dua. We ask Allah Ta'ala to bring the jinns and it is Allah Ta'ala who brings the jinns. That's how it works. Once the person came to me and said that in his village the magicians have sent the jinns to possess the, ch the school boys and the school boys got possessed and the parents took the school boys to the magicians to treat them so we asked Allah Ta'ala to bring the jinns and the jinns came and took shahada and I said did the jinns of the boys come they said no only the jinns of the magicians I said okay let's ask Allah Ta'ala to bring the jinns of the boys so we did ask and the jinn said no Allah did not accept because if the jinn of if the jinns of the boys come and become Muslim the boys will be cured and the people will say it is the magicians who cured them so you see we cannot bring the jinns by our own will and our own decision it is asking Allah Ta'ala and Allah Ta'ala brings the jinns so whenever Allah sees that that this will not be a good thing not be good for Islam or for the person or whatever or that this person still needs to make tawbah before uh, he gets cured for example if someone is using shirk or going to people that do shirk and if we cure him without him understanding that it is the Quran who cured him so he can believe it is the shirk who cured him and instead of being a cause of increasing the iman and going back to Allah it will not be um, and that also means that if we try to use chin catching for something that Allah does not like it will stop working it will stop working yet the jinns can come because they understand that we are doing something wrong and it is an opportunity for them to deceive us so they will come and pretend to become Muslim and put us in a wrong track because we are asking wrong things to Allah Ta'ala but mainly what will happen because we are fighting the shayateen and the magicians so there's many plenty of jinns that want to attack us and we are protected because we work for Allah it is Allah's duty to help the believers so as soon as we go out of track all those jinns and shayateen find the opportunity to attack us so something very bad can happen to us so the jinn catching will stop working and the jinns that we have converted to Islam will stop listening to us and all those who are bad uh, will attack us but if someone really goes out of track and for example ask for the future and ask for wrong information about the patients and about people he can get jinns to give him that information and to drive him astray and he will become like a fortune teller and that will keep on working that way and that will be totally out of the track of Islam. Now by experience, when people do jinn catching and have mistakes when they read Quran the jinn catching will still work even if you read translated Quran it will still work 
Of course, it will not be as clear and as fast and as efficient as reading the Arabic original Quran, but still it will work. Now, if we don't read Quran in jinn catching, it will work for a moment just by asking Allah wa Taala, or just by taking intention or letting the catcher bring the jinns without without him saying nothing, just by asking and taking intention and bringing the jinns. But the Quran is the guarantee that the jinns really become Muslim. Because when they become Muslim, the Quran does not burn them anymore. So if they don't really become Muslim, the Quran will keep burning them and they cannot, they cannot uh, deceive us for long. They cannot keep cheating for a long time. So because we had some of our students that started doing catching and stopped reading Quran, so the jinns st understood that they can just pretend to become Muslim and give them any information they want to give them and drive them astray. So that is what's going to happen if we don't use Quran in jinn catching. The jinns will start pretending to become Muslim and give us wrong information. Now, because the catching also is a dua, so nothing really bad can happen with the catching. With the catching, for example, some patients tell us uh, to tell them when we're going to do the catching because they might be driving or something and something will happen to them. Nothing will happen to them. If Allah Ta'ala knows that this catching is going to lead to a very bad situation like having an accident or dying or getting definitely possessed, Allah will not allow it to happen. So this is why in jinn catching we are very confident that it can only be good because we are asking Allah wa Ta'ala and Allah is making us. Now, in jinn catching, we don't use jinns. We don't use jinns to bring jinns. We don't keep jinns with us for help. And we don't believe in jinns help in jinn catching or in ruqya at all. Some people say they do ruqya and they have Muslim jinns to help them. In all the cases I had to, I got to see and I got to check. They did have Muslim jinns in the beginning, but within short time, some kafir jinns will come because the people, the patients, they do have kafir jinns and they will understand that we are using that jinn. That is our strong point. He's giving away the information to catch them or to cure the patient. And the magicians will also understand that that is our strong point, that Muslim jinn that helps us. So they will send jinns to, to crush him and to replace him so that every time you call Sheikh Ibrahim, it is Qandur or Haibut or whoever that will answer and mislead us. So that is what happens when we rely on Muslim jinns for, for Ruqya as a whole and for catching particularly. So catching does not involve any jinns and it's not jinns that bring the jinns. Uh, it's not jinns that bring the jinns. It is that we ask to Allah Ta'ala and the jinns come. Now, when we convert the jinns, we send them all to fight the magicians. That is what we send them. Even if the jinn sins, says he wants to worship Allah Ta'ala, we will not accept. We say that you used to harm people, work for magicians. You have done a lot of evil in your life. Now you cannot just sit somewhere to worship Allah Ta'ala. You have to struggle to repair the evil you have done. So you have to fight with us. You have to fight for Allah wa Ta'ala against the magicians and against the evil on earth. And we read the verse, فَقَاتِلُوا Fight the Allahs of Shaitan. So he will see that it is the order of Allah Ta'ala. So even if we ask the jinns to do something, it's not for us. And it's not like a personal relation. It is we ask them to do. We show them to do what Allah Ta'ala is asking them to do. And the link we keep with the Muslim jinns is the dua. So the dua is very important in all Islamic activity that whatever we do to help the deen of Allah Taala, we also need to make dua every night so that Allah accepts our efforts and bless them and makes and protects our work and also makes the effect and gives the victory. It is necessary in all Islamic activities and also in Ruqya. And that dua will affect the jinns directly like putting fuel in the engine. So we have to keep on making dua for all the Islamic work we have achieved in our life every day. That is the link we keep the, with the Muslim jinns. Now, 
can we ever call ask Allah Ta'ala not call the jinn directly but ask Allah to bring a Muslim jinn to help us um, well sometimes sometimes very seldomly if we are in a situation that we don't understand and we need some clarification we will ask Allah to send the jinn that will clarify the situation it could be a Muslim jinn it could also be a non-Muslim jinn but not necessarily a particular jinn so when we do catching for a patient there is a limit the jinn's word is like an energetic word like levels of energy so we will first catch the genes that are apparent, that are on the surface. And then we try to get those who are more deep in the patient. And we can never be sure that we got all the genes. Even if the genes who come say there are no more genes, yet there still can be some more genes that they don't see. So that's how it is. So for this is why, for example, the information the patient gives us is important. When he says about his dreams, if he's got sexual genes, if he hears voices in his mind, if something is moving in his body. So we need to know that so that the catcher will focus his attention and try to get the thing that is provoking it. So that also means that we cannot use gene catching as a test. If a person wants to test us and see if what we do is right or wrong and he gives us wrong information and we do the gene catching so it is quite likely that we will get a wrong result and we will not get the good genes about him and that's how it is and we don't use gene catching as a test and to prove that what we do is right we don't this is a dua it is asking Allah this bring the genes it's not a joke and we had once a patient that was very badly affected and after we did the catching and everything, he said, can you ask the jinns to tell me the name of my sister? Subhanallah, what is the interest? Nothing. He knows the name of his sister. There's no need to ask such stupid questions. Just to check if what you are saying is reliable or not. I told him, you are saying that because we only charge you 50 pounds for all this work. It is because we are so fools. This is why. Uh, we should charge you 500 pounds or 2,000 pounds. That way you not be joking with us. And you will know what you are doing is so is serious. But because you are so nice and we look so simple, you are not giving us respect. May Allah Ta'ala help us. So jinn catching cannot be used as a test. And the more we have accurate information, the better the catching will be. Now, if you do the catching, and the jinn says there's no more jinns with the patient, yet the patient is moving and shaking. So what does that mean? That means there are jinns with the patient still there, moving his body, but the jinns cannot see them. So we continue catching. We read, And we keep trying to get those jinns. Now we can hit on the patient or massage or tell him to hit himself those places that are moving so that we take the jinns out and if uh, if the jinn says there's no more jinns but the patient feels pains in his body well that could be jinns and that could be magic so we continue reading we can tell the catcher okay let's focus on the magic if it is the magic causing those pains let's focus on the magic we read waqadimna and other verses to destroy the magic and most of the time that will make some other genes come out uh, some other genes appear and if the patient is just feeling tickling in his body well that could be just the place that the genes have left and that could be jinns and that could also be the magic so we keep on reading verses and we try to continue until the patient feels nothing so what if the patient leaves and goes home and feels jinns with him when we have done the catching and we told him that the jinns have gone 
What does that mean? Well, it could be many things. It could be some genes he had that were not apparent, that were just hiding or sleeping, and they got up at, at that moment. It could be that there are genes in the house, and those genes, when he came empty of genes, they just took the place. So even when we catch for the house, when the patient is here, yet we don't have guarantee that we removed all the genes of the house, especially if there is something in the house that is holding them. Uh, and it could be that there are genes around the center that attack the patients that are there just to spoil our work and wait for people to leave to possess them in the same way they were possessed before to make them believe that our gene catching is fake and our treatment is useless. So anyway, if the patient says that he's gone home and there are still genes with him, we must try to investigate this matter and understand why he's got why he still have genes or he's got new genes with him and if it is genes attacking the center and attacking our patients to spoil our work we have to catch for them we have to catch them and we have to catch for them regularly regularly we have to catch the genes that are trying to spoil our work that are not happy with what we're doing that are spying on the patients that are ready to replace those we have removed all that we have to try to catch for that every day to protect our work and our patients and may Allah Ta'ala accept us. Anyway, so there are many reasons that make that there still can be genes with the patient. So the main thing in the treatment is to remove the magic. So once the, the magic will be finished, there will be no more access to the genes in the patient's body and the, and the, and the problem will end. Now, when we start the catching, we read, Inna waliyya yallah. الذي نزل الكتاب وهو يتولى الصالحين. My master is Allah. My wali, my ally is Allah. I am working for Allah. Allah is my boss. I am doing this for Allah, for the sake of Allah Taala. I'm not doing this for my own, for my own interest, for anything else than Allah تبارك وتعالى. الذي نزل الكتاب. He has given the book. The book of Allah is my tool, is my weapon. Yeah, against the jinns, against the magicians and the shayateen. وَهُوَ يَتَوَلَّ الصَّالِحِينَ And he takes as allies those who are salih, the pious. So because I'm doing this for the, for, for the sake of Allah and by the book of Allah, Allah is going to help me. It is the help of Allah that makes the jinns come and make everything work. So that is our manhaj, that is our path in jinn catching. Doing it for Allah, with the book of Allah, and by the help of Allah Taala. So this verse matches perfectly what we are doing in the catching. So that is why we start by reading it to, re to remind ourselves of our intention and that we are doing this for Allah and by the book of Allah and by uh, the help of Allah Taala. Now, in the catching, if the pilot there are some mistakes the pilot can do that gets the catcher exhausted and tired. For example, if the, if the pilot is slow and hesitating, that makes the jinns nervous. Because the jinns are created from fire, you cannot just tell him, just wait, stay still, wait a bit. You cannot. They cannot bear waiting, doing nothing. Uh, so that makes them nervous and that will also get the catcher to become nervous and unstable and unease at unease. So you have to be fast and not waste time and go straight to the point and go to next one, next one and not keep repeating things uselessly. Also, if the pilot asks excessive questions, useless questions, that makes the jinns nervous and also the pilot will be, uh, the catcher will be tired of that situation. And also, if you read inappropriate verses that are not working, that don't give result, uh, and subhanAllah, it is strange when I see some, some pilots reading verse and he's so happy to read that verse, but that's not doing any effect. That's not, the effect is not visible on the patient, on the catcher, uh, on the jinn. Uh, so the jinn is getting more and more nervous that what is happening. So... Uh, so, so that means that the catcher, the, the, the catcher must direct the pilot. Once the catching is finished, the catcher must tell the pilot that what you have done 
is not right. This is how you should do. This is what you should read and this and that. And the pilot must adapt to the catcher. So even if you are used to catch with your own catcher or with other catchers in a specific way, when you change catcher and he tells you, no, that does not work with me. This is how you should do it. You have to, you have to, uh, you have to adapt yourself to each catcher. That way it keeps going. So if you don't, if the pilot refuses to adapt himself, so what will happen eventually is that the catcher will refuse to work with that pilot. And that will create a problem to us that this catcher can only work with that pilot and so the group will not be working fluently. Now when we do the catching, we read after Inna Waliyya Allah, we read Aina Matakunu until the first jinn comes. When the first jinn comes, appears in the catcher, we stop reading Aina Matakunu, we pass on to the next verses to make him become Muslim. So in the beginning, we will be speaking with that jinn and trying to make him become Muslim using verses like Allah Nuru Samawati Al Ada in the Dina and Allah Islam, etc. So now, when the first jinn comes, we just read Hurrimat to destroy the blood. So the blood for the jinns is like the fuel and that gives them strength and gives them kufr. So when we remove the blood that weakens them and removes their kufr and they came back to the status they were before getting the blood. And also the verse Hurrimat will keep bringing the other jinns linked to the blood. So as long as there's blood sacrifices involved in the matter or the patient we are catching for, so all the blood is getting removed and all the jinns linked to the blood are coming. So, in the same time, it is bringing the other jinns, making them become Muslim by destroying their blood. So, once we finished the, removing the blood, then we destroy the pacts. The pacts are the contracts between the jinns and the magicians, like, like work contracts. So, the, those contracts tie them to the magicians. Um, and sometimes, they, 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 the contracts stay, says that they will die if they betray the contract. So we just remove, erase all the contracts by reading Bara'atun. Now you can read Bara'atun once and then keep reading Fafataqnahumah just to break them all, to break all the contracts. So by that time, when the blood is finished and the contracts is finished, the jinn should embrace Islam because no more blood, no more contracts. And they have seen the power of Allah Taala in bringing them and in destroying the blood and destroying their contracts. So by that time, they should normally become Muslim. Now, if they don't, we can help them by reading, for example, وَكَانَ حَقًا عَلَيْنَا نَصْرُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ It is our duty to help the believers or other things to incite them to become Muslim, like in the Dina and Allah al-Islam, uh, or the verse of Jannah, إِنَّ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ مَفَازًا or other verses that Allah Ta'ala is going to give them, وَشَدَدَنَا مُلْكَهُ وَآتَيْنَاهُ الْحِكْمَةَ وَفَصْلَ الْخِطَابِ Now, if we see that it's not working and the jinn is still not becoming Muslim, so we have to engage a discussion with him. We have to ask him, what is the problem? Why don't you become Muslim? And then we will handle, <coughs> we will handle whatever argument, whatever reason he has uh, that he does not become Muslim. For example, if he says that his family are in prison, uh, so we read Aynama plus Fafataqnahuma to bring his family and that way uh, there will be no more uh, objection for him to become Muslim. Now, if, the, if you are catching and the patient is moving and doesn't stop, so we're going to tell the patient to repeat Shahada if he is conscious to repeat shahada and we keep on catching and if it's necessary we will hit on the patient's head or wherever he's feeling the jinns wherever the jinns are moving and keep catching and making him repeat until all those manifestations are finished now once we got the jinns when we once we finish the first part of the catching by bringing the jinns with the patient we ask them, we ask them, what does the patient have? Well, most of the time he has magic. So we ask how many times magic was done to him, by how many people. Now, this question is not, the answer of the jinn is not reliable 
It's not that the jinns are liars necessarily. They're not more liars than humans. But they are in a different world and they understand things. They see things differently. For example, we understand by how many times magic was done on the person is how many times someone has been to a magician and paid to get magic done on the person. Or if it is the magician directly doing it himself. So how many times he sat and did the work to do magic on the person. That is what we understand. Now the jinns can see that this person, his hair, the magician has taken his hair and made knots and put it in the graveyard. So he sees three magic. And he can see that there is some magic to stop him working or, and to stop him getting married and to make him ill. So it is three. But each one of them has been done many times. So the same question, the same very simple question, how many times magic was done on the person, we can get answers ranging, ranging from 3 to 30. Plus, sometimes the jinns don't understand our numbers. You see, we count by tens because we have 10 fingers. Uh, that's why we count 1, 10, 20, 100, 200. Uh, but if someone does not have 10 fingers, so 10 and 100 does not mean nothing to him. So sometimes the jinns don't understand what we are, the numbers. And sometimes they can, look, by looking through our mind, understand and give us the numbers the way we understand them. Sometimes not, you see. So, so, so when we get these numbers of uh, how many times magic was done by how many people, also the people, we understand the person that has gone to a magician and paid for the magic. So even if one person has done magic on the patient by going to three different magicians, we understand it is one person who did the magic on the, on the patient, independently of how many different magicians he has been to. That is not, that, that information is not useful to us. We just want to know who is the cause, who hates the patient and wants to destroy his life and who is doing how many people we don't want to know who but we want to know how many people are doing that you see so uh yet even if this information is not reliable a hundred percent but we need it to give a minimum of understanding to the patient because if we just do the diagnostic then we do the catching then we say, okay, the genes have gone, we're going to do the treatment. And he says, but what, what do I have? What is my problem? And we cannot answer him. One will say, according to a diagnostic, this is your problem. Well, that will leave the patients frustrated and they need to have some understanding. And also when the patient comes back, we need to know that from the point we were in day one up to now, what, how, yani, what is the situation? If he had five magic or three how many are left now so we need to have that information to follow up the patient so but if it comes into a contradiction that that we had this information or different information that is when we have to explain to the patient that uh, the genes are in different world and we have to be careful uh, uh, with their information and not take it as hundred percent Now, there is something else with the jinns that we have to know that the jinns believe what they see. They don't rely on thinking. They don't rely on analyze. They just rely on seeing. For example, if the jinn sees three magic, he says the patient has three magic. Now, behind those three magic, there can be more magic. And we can see that the patient has more, uh, more symptoms that show that there are other things but the jinn does not see them. Now the jinn does not have the intelligence to say, ah, this is what I see, and maybe there is more. He does not have that intelligence. He will just say that is what he has, and that's it. You see, for example, for example, magic can be done to show that such person has done the magic. So even the jinn will see that the person who did the magic is such person. And the catcher might see that as well. So when you see that information, if you get to see that information you must you must know that it can be right and it can be wrong
and some catchers become like the jinns, means that they believe what they see and they take it as a reality and that gives us a problem because now the catcher is convinced by something that he got from the catching that does not match with our reality or even if it does or even if it is possible but that information is creating problems in our world so you must always keep and when the jinn see that the catcher believes what he sees they will start showing him things that will that will put him in a wrong track and we have people that have done a lot of problems like that of course they have gone out of our group now the catching is not used to for diagnostic it is the symptoms of the patient that we use to understand what he has and to determine and uh, to determine the treatment now maybe if the jinn says that he has eaten sihr or something that we did not see in diagnostic we can add some sana we can add some cupping but it's not necessary it's not systematic for example for example i had a patient she refused to do the cupping and we gave her the treatment so after the treatment she came back and she was happy and she wanted to do the cupping so i asked her where does she have pains and actually all her pains have gone all her pains had gone so the first day we wanted to do the cupping because she had pains but when she did the simple treatment without the cupping so the pains had gone yet we did the cupping because well because she did have the pains in the first place and just to be sure that nothing is left so this is to tell you that even if the jinn says that there is magic in his heart or in his brain or whatever but the patient does not feel anything and we did not detect anything wrong for, with that part of his body so we did not put any hijama there so it is not a must that we must put the hijama because the jinn has said it because even if there is some magic there that the jinn can see but the patient cannot feel and we cannot detect in diagnostic it can go with a simple treatment of bathing and oil and sana and incense and jinn catching and listrating to ruqya and putting hijama on the other places so this is why we don't use jinn catching for diagnostic and even if some information comes up that we will complete the diagnostic but it's not necessary to do it so sometimes exceptionally we will ask something to the jinn to complete the diagnostic well when the patient has an ambiguous situation some illness or something or some fears or something that we can't really say if it is magic or not magic so we can ask the jinns is that problem of the patient due to jinns and magic they would say yes we are doing that illness or they would say no we have nothing to do with that that is just a natural illness that we jinns and magic has no involvement in that thing so sometimes we can ask to clarify some situations now when the jinn does not convert to islam what is the key question to convert him it is to say what the, why don't you become muslim what is stopping you become muslim so unlike the humans that make jidal uh, that keep on uh, uh, that keep discussing too much the jinns will say exactly what is the problem and if you answer if you solve that problem he will be in allah embrace islam immediately so whatever the problem he gives you now you have to get the proper verses or the proper reaction to handle that question so if it is a lover jinn you read wa min ayati an khalaqa lakum min anfusikum azwaja so sometimes the jinn will say no i want a girl exactly like her so we keep reading until until he uh, until that wife the wives he get will suit him same thing if it is a man yeah a few time ago we had a, a jinn nia that she had said she was a queen and said that she had 30 husbands so now uh, and she was asking us why can men have four wives in islam and women cannot so uh, and she already had 30 husbands so we just kept reading this verse women ayatihi and she understood that she understood i said what did you understand she said i understood that marriage is a protection uh, for uh, for uh, women and keeping her from the abuse of of males and etc and she was happy to 
go into the frame of the Islamic marriage. So we keep reading Wamin Ayati until the jinn gets satisfaction. If the jinn is attached to Iblis, we read in the Shaytan Alakum Adu Fatahidu Adun. We can also read Waqal al Shaytan. We can also read with Qulna Lil Malaika Tisjudu Li Adam al Surat Al Kaf. We can also read Wainahu Kana Yakulu Safihuna Ala Allahi Shatata. This verse, this, this verse speaks of Iblis directly how he is lying about Allah Taala. If the jinn claims he's a king, we read Washadadna Mulkahu, so he will see how Allah Taala is going to make his kingdom stronger and make him a bigger king. If the jinn says that he is following, he has a pact from the ancestors and all these generations have been promised to him, so we read Baraaton to break those packs. If the jinn says that people worship him, so we read وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا الْيَعْبُدُونَ Many other verses we can read, we can show him the greatness of Allah Taala. We can read the verse of paradise, we can read many verses uh, uh, in that situation. Now if the jinn says that we can do nothing against him, that means that the jinn is protected by something. Either he has magic to protect him, so we read Waqadimna to destroy that magic. Either he's a jinn that has many heads, and what happens to those jinns when you when you read enough reading to kill a jinn, one head will go. So you can do what you need to kill a jinn five times or ten times, but he will still be there laughing, say that you can do nothing to me. So in that case, we read Fitrat Allah to make him come back to normal, and that will remove all the extra heads very fast and he will come back to normal state. Now, if he is even more changed than that, there's another verse, We will uh, um, I will order them to change the, the creation of Allah. This is Iblis uh, speaking, Allah is quoting Iblis in Quran that he will make people to change the creation of Allah Taala. So we also read that to make the jinn come back to normal. Now, if if the jinn is just very strong, we will tell him that we're going to ask Allah Ta'ala to increase your strength and read وَكَانَ حَقًا عَلَيْنَا نَصْرُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ to make him stronger. So, so we have to, if he says that you can do nothing to me, you must take it seriously and try to understand what is making him so confident. Now, if the jinn says that it is the Muslims that worship him, so how can he become Muslim when the Muslims are worshipping him. So that doesn't make sense. Is he going to become Muslim to worship himself like the Muslims do? So we read in uh, Dina and Allah al Islam to show what is the true Islam. We, and if he says that, how come these Muslims they have this Islam and they're doing that? So we read Alam Ahd ilaykum ya bani Adam alla ta'budu shaitan to show that it is the Iblis who is driving them astray. Now we can also do the Salat on Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he sees uh, the good example of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam instead of seeing those uh, bad examples of uh, 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 of Muslims. Now if the jinn says he's very rich, so we read Wa min shayin illa indana khaza inuhu and to show him the richness that Allah Ta'ala is going to give him. If the jinn says that he does not have any creator, so we read Allahu Khaliqu Kulli Shay, or we read other verses on Allah Ta'ala, Huwa Allahu Alladhi La Ilaha Illa Huwa Alimu Al Ghaybi Wa Shahada, etc. So he will see what Allah Ta'ala is doing. Uh, now if he sees that, if he says that his relatives have been killed, so we read for Subhanallah, soon to bring them back if the jinn is handicapped or wounded or ill we read surat fatiha to cure him if his body is weird we will read fitrat allah to make him normal if the jinn says uh, makes us an offer to be, to go with him to work with him so we will say that that uh, that will end us all in jahannam and we read hadihi jahannam allati kuntum tu'adun if uh, the jinn offers to make an arrangement, so well we can just read. What we can it is many things we can read. What kind of to show what Allah is going to give. We can 
tell him to look at everything he can offer to us and read Waqadimna and other verses to destroy it all so he has nothing to offer. Uh, we can uh, read also the verse of the lie, deception of Iblis, Waqal al-Shaytan, to see that it's all wrong. Now, if the jinn threatens your family, so what we do, we are going to ask Allah Ta'ala ta ta to bring his family. We read, That way, he would be very much afraid and stop threatening your family. So, make sure you threaten him very well, so that any more jinns will never threaten your family again. If the jinn says he's not afraid of hell, or hell cannot burn him, so you read Hadihi Jahannam, and if you see that he's really resisting, that means there's something special in his body, so you read Fitrat Allah. Now, if the jinn says he's afraid of sorcerers, so we read Wakana Haqqan Alayna, so that he sees the power that Allah is going to give him, or we bring the beast to eat the sorcerers. If the jinn says that other jinns want to kill him, well, we can read Wakana Haqqan Alayna to give him power, or we will just tell him okay just sit there and we get the chief of those jinns to convert them and if the jinn now is discussing too much that is rare but some jinns just keep speaking speaking arguing arguing so we'll tell him okay now you become muslim or you go to jahannam that's all and we read hadihi jahannam until he changes his mind now if the jinn cannot speak if he's dumb we read Surah Fatiha to cure him, or we read the four first verses of Surah Al-Rahman, Al-Qur'an, Khalaq Al-Insan, Allamahu Al-Bayan, so he can speak. Now, if the jinn does not speak our language, we'll tell him, look in the mind of the patient for our language, and, uh, and so that you can speak that language. We can read, فَكَشَفْنَا عَنْكَ غِطَاءَكَ or يُعْتِ الْحِكْمَةَ مَنْ يَشَاءَ so that he will learn that, that language. Now, if we are in a situation that we don't know the verse, uh, the verse, the proper verse for that situation, so we can read the general verse like "Inna amruhu ida arada kun fayakun." His order when he wants something is to say "be" and it will be. Or we can make dua and ask Allah Taala to make the thing uh, that that we we want. Like for example, Ya Allah, guide him, show him the truth of Islam, show him your light, show him, show him, uh, guide him, change his darkness into light, uh, make him understand the truth of Islam and the reality of Iblis until he becomes Muslim. So, when we, if any problem happens in the catching, if any problem happens, like the jinns threatening in us, for example, or like, uh, or like for example, the the catcher not feeling well. Uh, so anything happening in the in the catching so when we must solve that thing immediately it must be solved uh, in the same time we must not keep we must not leave any problems to be solved later on uh, so anything happening in the catching we must solve it right away. For example, if the catcher gets blocked and he cannot catch anymore, that means that he's being attacked and something is stopping him to catch. So we have to solve it right now. And we can always solve it. Though keep breathing or using hitting the patient or the catcher if he's feeling something, asking Allah Ta'ala until you solve the problem. Okay, that will be part one. Inshallah, we'll continue uh, part two. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Baiklah guys, sampai di sini dulu perjumpaan kita. Website Syekh Abdul Rauf Ben Halima ada di www.benhalimaabderauf.fr. Silakan bagikan video ini kepada orang-orang yang Anda sayangi. Semoga Allah Ta'ala berikan pahala melimpah kepada Anda. Tambahan dari saya sebagai admin pengisi dubbing video ini. Pesan untuk siapa saja yang terketuk hatinya untuk menerima Islam sebagai agamanya. Silahkan ucapkanlah dua kalimat syahadat. Yaitu asyadu ala ilaha ilaullah, wa asyadu ana muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. Masuk Islam itu sangat mudah dan dosa-dosa kalian sebelumnya akan dihapuskan, seperti bayi yang baru lahir. Semoga bermanfaat. Mari kita tutup dengan doa kafara majelis. Agar amal baik kita kekal sampai hari kiamat dan dosa-dosa kita diampunkan Allah Ta'ala. Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdika, asyadu ala ilaha ila anta astagfiruka wa atubu ilaika. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.